Ghana is a West African country which spans the Gulf of Guinea and the Atlantic Ocean to the south, sharing borders with the Ivory Coast in the west, Burkina Faso in the north, and Togo in the east. With over 31 million people, Ghana is the second most populous country in West Africa after Nigeria. The capital and largest city is Accra. Other major cities include Kumasi, Tamal, and Sekandi Takoradi. Ghana is an average natural resource-enriched country possessing industrial minerals, hydrocarbons, and precious metals. It is an emerging designated digital economy with mixed economy hybridization and an emerging market. It has an economic plan target known as the Ghana Vision 2020. This plan envisions Ghana as the first African country to become a developed country between 2020 and 2029 and a newly industrialized country between 2030 and 2039. To see this happen, they are constructing a lot of infrastructure to aid in the realization of this dream. Most innovative architects in Ghana have set out to respond to one of society's greatest challenges, designing a world today that can adapt to a radically different tomorrow. From energy and power to healthcare, Ghana has a well-balanced range of projects that have broken ground. Welcome to Think Rich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business, and personal development content to inform, motivate, and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship, rather than global pity ad, the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you are missing out. Tedekorshi Koko Museum In 1879, a Ghanaian agriculturalist called Tedekorshi brought some cocoa seeds back from an expedition to Equatorial Guinea and planted them in his village. Ghana would go on to produce more than half of the world's cocoa supply at one point. Now, a group of architects hopes to build a cocoa museum in his honor. The establishment of the cocoa museum is in line with the vision of the government to promote local consumption of cocoa. Lebanese Ghanaian firm Kii Architectural Group is hoping to revive the Ghanaian village of Mampong while celebrating its past and aiding its economic upliftment. The founders of Kii have conceptualized the Tet Korshi Cocoa Museum, which they plan to build on the farm where the first cocoa seeds were planted in Ghana. The area holds particular significance in the story of Ghana's economic growth. The plans, which were commissioned by Ghana's tourism department, includes the museum itself, an amphitheater, a multipurpose hall, a restaurant, landscaped gardens, and a factory. The design also proposes that the whole process, from cocoa harvesting through to fermentation, roasting, and manufacturing, be accommodated at the site. Accra Sky Train. The Accra Sky Train will be the first of its kind to grave the African continent. The Ghanaian government compromised on a deal with the African Investment Sky Train Consortium to build the $2.6 billion light railway network back in 2019 to align the nation's ambition to rehabilitate, upgrade, and advance its dysfunctional railway system. Casualty of the COVID-19 pandemic, construction work on the Accra Sky Train, Ghana's first light rail project was delayed. Construction work will commence with the government's approval, and this is expected to happen in September this year and developed over three phases. The project is envisioned to aid with Accra's agonizing traffic since the SkyTrain has the capacity to hold about 380,000 passengers each day. The Ghana Ministry of Railway Development is the client and Wilson Bailey Homes and Avcon will do construction work. The Signature Accra's landscape will witness a truly world-class development when the top-of-range design of the Signature towers into the skyline in the coming months. The Signature, which is developed by Cape May Properties, blends modern architectural and engineering concepts with a unique African design in a way that makes it both striking and inspiring. The Signature is located in a prime location close to the Kotoka International Airport, Accra Mall, and Airport City. A gorgeous cluster of luxury infused into two pairs of identical towers located in the Accra. The infrastructure is unique and conveys a message of strength and resilience inspired by Ghana's Adinkar emblem.
The framework will consist of 209 apartments. The concept of the signature laces its sophisticated architectural spectacle with a number of resourceful amenities, such as gyms, yoga, ballet spaces, and pool sidebars, complementing the swimming pool and an indoor and outdoor playground displaying a reasonable amount of flora. The 13th floor is estimated to cost about $50 million. Construction is expected to be completed this year. Assembly Plant The ceremony took place at Toyota Susho Manufacturing Company Limited at Freezone's Enclave Tema. Ichiro Kashitani, President and Chief Executive Officer of Toyota Susho Corporation, announced in 2019 that the company will start assembling its vehicles in Ghana from August 2020. The decision to establish the assembling plant in Ghana was announced at the 7th Tokyo International Conference on African Development TICAD7, in Japan, where President Muhammadu Buhari had, in a meeting with Shitani, asked Toyota to establish a plant in Nigeria. Akufo Addo had said the signing of the MU with Toyota Susho falls in line with the vision of making Ghana an automotive hub for West Africa and the larger African market. He said Ghana is the base to reach the larger African market with the coming into force of the African continental free trade area. Speaking at the event, Akufo Addo said he is pleased that the sighting of the plant has become a reality despite claims by some persons that it was only a hoax which will never see the light of day. Akufo Addo said, Government attaches great importance to the development of the automobile industry in Ghana. By assembling and ultimately producing cars in Ghana, the importation of second-hand used cars in Ghana will be reduced and at the same time, the export of made-in-Ghana cars to other African markets will earn our nation the much-needed foreign exchange. Also speaking, Alan Karamitin, Ghana Minister for Trade and Industry, said the establishment of the plant in the country is a step towards the local manufacturing of cars in Ghana. In Africa, we import millions of dollars of cars. I'm very confident that with what we're doing here, very soon, we will see made in Ghana cars all around Africa. The industry will create highly skilled jobs and promote training opportunities for the youth of our country. It will also have multiplying effect by stimulating the growth of other sectors of our economy, Kermitten said. Volkswagen, Nissan, Sinatruck and Katanka or other vehicle brands have cited assembly plants in Ghana. In April, Hyundai and TIA, South Korean multinational automotive manufacturers, announced plans to establish assembly plants in Ghana by the end of 2022. Kumasi International Airport Expansion Kumasi International Airport, IETA KMS, located in Kumasi, the capital city of Ashanti, Ghana, is operated by the government of Ghana. The airport offers international and domestic aviation services to passengers in the Ashanti region and nearby areas. It is regarded as one of the busiest international airports in the country. Known for its regional airline operations, the airport is undergoing an expansion to transform it into a full-fledged international airport. The expansion project forms part of the multimodal transportation system being developed by the government to enhance tourism in the Ashanti region. The airport has witnessed a steady rise in passenger traffic over the recent years. The expansion will also serve the growing demand by adding capacity to serve international passengers. The expansion project at Kumasi International Airport is being carried out in two phases. A $29 million rehabilitation project was carried out under Phase 1 by December 2014. Aeronautical ground lighting systems were installed and the existing runway was rehabilitated under the project. Groundbreaking for the 66.35 million euros, second phase of the expansion project was held in November 2018. Phase 2 involves construction of a new passenger terminal and multiple service facilities at the airport. The new terminal will have the capacity to handle more than 1 million passengers a year upon its completion. The existing runway will be extended from the current length of 1,981 meters to 2,300 meters, enabling the airport to accommodate wide-body aircraft such as Boeing 737 to 800.
Ghana's solar-powered airport. Ghana's airports will soon go green thanks to a government project that aims to equip every airport in the country with solar power plants to supply electricity. In order to implement this project, the Ghanaian government has sought Indian expertise. It is within this framework that Joseph Kofi Ada, the Ghanaian Minister of Aviation, recently received the Indian High Commissioner to Ghana, Sugand Rajaram. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the progress of the Ghanaian government's project. The authorities of this West African country have already signed a partnership agreement with Kachin International Airport in the southern Indian state of Kerala. This is the world's largest and first airport powered solely by solar energy, with a 40 megawatts photovoltaic solar power plant. A team from Kachin International Airport came to Ghana and assessed the country's airports to determine the cost of the project and the amount of an Ixin Bank of India financing facility of about $10 million that would be used to convert all the country's airports to solar power, said Ghana's aviation minister, Joseph Kofi Ada. Katoka International Airport in Ghana is likely to be the first to benefit from the solar project for the country's airports. The authorities intend to build a solar power plant with a capacity of 6 megawatts. Kotoka is Ghana's largest airport, serving the capital Accra, with a capacity of more than 1 million passengers a year. The Ghanaian Ministry of Aviation estimates that solar power could cut airport electricity bills by up to 30%. Green energy will also reduce the carbon footprint of Ghana's airports. Petronia City Project Petronia City is the vision of CEO and founder of Wanda World Estates, Nana Kwame Bediako. Designed around the ideology of work, live, learn, and play, Petronia City is a self-sustaining, master-planned, integrated city. It will attract, retain, and support businesses, human capital needs, and elevate Ghana's western region into a world-class business location, tourist destination, and home. The city's 2,000-acre development will include residential, office, industrial, commercial, leisure, and hospitality space. It will be the first at the heart of the western region of Ghana, home to the country's rapidly growing oil, gas, and mining industries. The Petronia City project will unroll in three phases over the next 10 years. It kicked off in October 2013 with full acquisition of construction machinery and equipment. It was then followed by clearing of about 200 acres of the site, as well as the access roads and service areas. Phase 1 of the project consists of a 70-acre prototype of the entire development, beginning with the construction of world-class basic infrastructure such as electricity, water system, sewage treatment, stormwater drainage, parking and bus terminal, master-planned road network, data slash telecom networks and development of commercial and residential facilities, which include four-star hotel, 150 rooms with 200-seat conference facility, four office blocks, 22,000 meters, recreational center, shopping mall, schools and clinics, 25 three- and four-bedroom executive villas, and 140 studio, one-, two-, and three-bedroom apartments. Phase 2 of the project will see the development of West Africa's first energy city, the main business hub and office park for international key players in the oil and gas and mining sectors. Located in the center of the commercial zone, Energy City will provide the opportunity for industry leaders in oil and gas and mining exploration, production and related support services to work in close proximity with one another and form a more efficient business community by taking advantage of shared resources, technology transfer and enhanced flow of information. In Phase 2 bits, Golf City will be established. The first of its kind in West Africa, Petronia City's Golf City will be a golf-centered community and tourist destination, attracting visitors from around the world. Golf City will consist of luxury villas and apartments, boutique hotels, a clubhouse, retail shops and restaurants set in 365 acres of lush landscape, creating a unique experience for residents and visitors. Golf City will be home to the only 18-hole world-class championship golf course in the region. Phase 2C will develop the city's light and heavy industrial zone. Mm -hmm. 
Ghana National Cathedral The Ghana National Cathedral is envisioned as a physical embodiment of unity, harmony, and spirituality. Drawing reference from both Christian symbolism and traditional Ghanaian heritage, such as the nation's seat of power, the stool, as well as the shade of celestial authority, the Bowman ceremonial canopies, and the tabernacle, the new cathedral takes these symbols of royal and religious veneration and democratizes them from the individual to the people. A giant associate's concept for the new Ghana National Cathedral establishes a unique 21st century landmark where religion, democracy, and local tradition are seamlessly and symbolically intertwined. Conceived as a physical embodiment of unity, harmony, and spirituality, the National Cathedral will be a rich, authentic celebration of Ghanaian tradition and culture, and a place of inspiration, reflection, and common devotion. Its form derives from traditional symbols of worship and veneration, drawing reference from both Christian symbolism and traditional Ghanaian heritage. Emblems like the nation's seat of power, the stool, the shade of celestial authority, the bowman, ceremonial canopies, and the tabernacle inspire the configuration. The new cathedral takes these symbols of royal and religious veneration and democratizes them from the individual to the people. The cathedral will be situated within 14 acres of newly landscaped gardens adjacent to Osu Cemetery. It will house a series of impressive chapels, a baptistery, a 5,000-seat two-level auditorium, a grand central hall, music school, choir rehearsal, art gallery, shop, and multi-use spaces. It will also be home to Africa's first Bible museum and documentation center, dedicated to Christianity and nation-building in Ghana. For the interiors, Ajay Associates will collaborate with some of the most celebrated and progressive Ghanaian and African artists to create the cathedral's religious adornment and furnishings. A new ceremonial route and landscape will be linking the cathedral site to Ghana's prominent celebratory landmarks, Independence Square, Osu Cemetery, the State House, and Africa Unity Circle. The Marine Drive Project the Marine Drive Project is a public-private partnership project. It is a 241-acre redevelopment scheme of Accra's waterfront initiated by Ghana's Ministry of Tourism, Arts, and Culture. The brief for the project, the origins of which trace back to the country's independence 60 years ago, called for a scheme that would establish an iconic skyline for Accra and transform the capital city center into a world-class tourism enclave. The Marine Drive will also provide essential infrastructure to support the country's developing cultural and creative industries. A giant associate's plan introduces a new waterfront promenade that reimagines the coast as a vibrant leisure and recreation space. The promenade will extend across the site, creating a seamless link between the capital city's most celebrated landmarks and unlocking access to the city's beachfront. This new public infrastructure will be punctuated by three civic anchors, each of which celebrates Ghana's rich history. At the heart of the promenade will be a new centerpiece public park, honoring the forefathers of Ghanaian independence. Extending from Independence Square down to the waterfront, this park will culminate in a coastal overlook that offers sweeping, dramatic vistas across this part of the Gulf of Guinea. Anchoring the promenade on east will be the National Concert Hall, a new cultural hub and public convention center envisioned next to Nkrumah's monument. Meanwhile, the west end of the promenade will terminate at the rejuvenated and refurbished Osu Castle and grounds. These three anchors form a framework for subsequent phases of new mixed-use beachfront developments. Together, they will establish a defining skyline for Ghana's capital and initiate commercial, office, leisure, and retail infrastructure aimed at harnessing the tourism sector as a transformative economic force for the benefit of the country and her people. By comparison, Ghana has one of the most active construction markets in Africa. There are more than $42 billion of active construction projects, of which more than 42% are transport infrastructure. After watching this video, I hope you see the potential Africa pauses, so be a proud African and work each day to make your continent a better place.
Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so as not to miss out on any of our amazing videos on Africa, entrepreneurship, and personal development. Help our channel grow.